All right, we are doing Big Hammer today. This is the well over 1K follow-up for the Springfield XDM Elite OSP. That's a lot of name right there. So if this is your first time here, the reason I do this is because it gives a really good opportunity to see the wear, kind of get a really good feel for these things. If any issues have come up, talk about those. When you get to that 500 or 1,000 round mark, which seems to be where a lot of people really begin to trust something. Now this has well over 1,000, which is why I name it well over 1K, because after that, I really just don't keep track. Now, for those of you that don't know, this monster is a full-size four and a half inch, 22 plus one round Pez dispenser for your absolute range enjoyment. Well, we will get into all the good stuff on that, see how things are working, but first, a word from today's sponsor. Now, Tack Pack is a subscription box that you can get set up for yourself or somebody that you know and love monthly that sets you up with gear that you might want, like, or need to get things done outdoors or out on the rain. Some of the coolest things I have gotten from Tack Pack are gonna be the reaction rod, so you can build your upper receiver and torque that thing down to spec without issue and cool little parts like anti-walk pins for that trigger system in your lower receiver. Go ahead and check them out online. Sign up is super easy and use code TC to get yourself a free swag pack. Well, I appreciate you guys all sitting through those because those really help the channel survive and grow. So talking about that XDM Elite OSP. So this is Springfield's kind of big full-size tactical offering. Optics ready, all the good stuff we are looking for these days. Has the new meta trigger system in it along with some other small changes to bring the XD line or the XDM line up to what's going on in the market today. So this is not gonna be a full review on that. If you're looking for the full review, I will link that down below. What this is gonna be about today, like I said, is talking about the wear, the things I've learned, all that good stuff. We'll do some pull tests so you guys kind of see how that trigger has worn in, if it's gotten any better, if it's gotten any worse, all that good stuff you may be looking for. And of course, talk about that range performance and then get into what I like or what maybe I think could be changed or better all that good stuff. So if you guys haven't, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, turn the bell notification icons on, hit that little bell down there so you get notified when like new videos come out if you're into this stuff. And if you're into this stuff, give the video a like. We're gonna go ahead and get into this thing, check it out, give you guys all the good stuff you wanna know now that it's got well over 1K through it right now. All right, let's jump into the well over 1K here and let's get a couple things out of the way real quick. Not a full review on this. I will list some specs over here from the factory. Um, so the basics on this thing, it is a full size setup, four and a half inch threaded barrel optics ready. And it's a big one. It's a piggy. Look at the size of that thing compared to my hand and I've got some pretty large double XL plus gloves, glove sized hands. So it's definitely a big setup if that's what you are looking for. And I definitely do like it. So let's go ahead and get the lights out of the way first. There's a reason I got two of them out here. Um, so the rail on this is not like the pick style size it is more like the glock style size so if you have your 1913 insert in your light like the one here on the left you're going to need to switch it to the one uh this glock size because that is a little bit smaller i just wanted to show you guys that and i think i might have said that backwards in the original review on this and if you're looking for the original review on this or the hex optics those videos will be listed down below so getting into this bad boy, you're going to get two 22 round Pez dispensers for the range out there. Uh, magazines are doing everything they need to do. There's no uh, abnormal wear to them. There's no coating. They are just left steel. So you're not going to see all the marks like you would on say uh, some SIG stuff or anything like that. But you're just going to have, I know it's kind of shiny, just basic normal scratching going on that you're going to get from doing mag exchanges and loading, unloading, all of that good stuff. So mag weld and muzzle, let's go over how things are working out here. The XDM comes with a very nice mag weld right there. You can see it is polymer. Um, it's funneled pretty well, but you're gonna see, I'll give you guys a good look up in there, get the best light I can for you. You're gonna see there are, let me grab a flashlight for you. All right, so what you're gonna see is just basic wear from that metal magazine going into the magwell right there, and that is going to happen. Um, I do prefer metal magwells because the polymer ones do kind of gall. You'll see some fraying on the edges right there and stuff. I hate using these lights, guys. I'm sorry, but I wanna make sure you can see it. Um, so it's good, it's working, but it's gonna get a little bit torn up, you know, specifically like on the edges right there where that metal mag is gonna catch it if you're doing magazine exchanges and you're not just perfectly in line with the magwell so going up from there the texture is great the texture is doing just fine everything you would expect out of it 
um, no problems there. Some people don't dig the uh, safety on the back strap there. I could care less. I don't even notice it. I don't feel it. The ambi controls are doing just fine. I don't find myself engaging them on accident or anything when I'm in that nice high grip like that. Everything has been good there. Moving forward from that, the trigger. We'll go ahead and uh, it's got a good trigger in it. So they did a pretty good job on this. Uh, there are a couple things we're going to talk about a little later. So you got to take up. There's some creep in there and then it breaks. So overall, it's not bad. There's your reset. Oh, there's your reset and a break. So not terrible at all. We'll do some pull tests here in a minute. Going forward from that, it's everything you would expect. I'm not seeing any crazy wear. A uh, little bit of holster wear kind of in certain areas that you would expect it just from drawing it and doing presentation and all that, but nothing that you wouldn't see on anything else. Going upstairs from there, you can see it does have the suppressor height sights. They are blacked out with your anti-glare serrations on the back right there. So everything there is working fine. The optics mounting plates, solid, nothing wrong there. The hex optics, if you didn't see the original videos down below, we're gonna be doing some follow-up because there's a couple things coming up with those. Uh, you do have that loaded chamber indicator right there across the top. Now it's a little bit hard to see with the light, but right there just under the head of the optic. And then across the hood of the barrel, typical wear. Everything else is looking good from the front. So breakdown, pretty typical. Lock it back, throw the lever up, release it, go forward. Recall spring and guide rod are doing just fine. I did put a little O-ring around the end of the barrel to keep it on there. It does not come with it, so you'll probably want to do that so you don't lose your thread protector. Taking a look at the barrel, it's everything you would expect on wear. There's nothing crazy going on here. All the way across the front right there, across the hood, across the sides right there, you can see it. And I've got probably past 2,000 rounds, even though this is the well over 1K, which is why I just name it the well over 1K. Uh, you can see always most uh, most things are going to kind of favor a corner. You can see it right there, and then you can see it right there on that side. A little bit more wear on what would be the left side than on the right. Again, you can take a good look right there. I'll get you some good light so that shows up. A little bit more wear on that left side. Nothing crazy going on with the lugs or anything like that. Getting up into the inside of the slide, you're gonna see that typical wear right there where the barrel hood goes in. Nothing else in here is going to be abnormal. It's everything that I would expect from the edge of the striker to the internal extractor right there. Everything is looking just fine. No problems in there. Now talking about the frame right here, we're going to see our typical wear pattern. So right there across the locking block, right there across the front of the rails. You can see most slides are gonna favor the front and rear corners like that. That's just how they kind of work, which is interesting on this one because in the back, it kind of favors that back corner a little bit and underneath where in the front of the rails, it kind of favors right across that top front right there. You can see where it's polished off. Now, those are your areas you're gonna wanna concentrate with lubrication. Once you get 500 to 1,000 rounds through these things, it's gonna show you where they need to be lubricated. Other than that, everything in here looks absolutely fine. I'm not seeing any problems. Nothing's going on with the triggers. I don't see any gouging, any galling, nothing. Nothing in here that wouldn't be expected with a setup with this many rounds through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together and we're gonna do some pull tests. All right, so I got this thing back together. Got my Timney gauge right here and we're going to do some pull tests on this. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt on these because you gotta hold the back strap. So I'm gonna kind of do it a little bit weird, but we'll go ahead and see what it is pulling at. So that one, the first one came in there at five and a half pounds. I'm gonna pull a little bit lower to show you guys if you get your finger low, how it will pull. So we'll get right at the bottom where that hook is which is the best leverage point. And you can see that's gonna drop it down. It comes about four pounds and I wanna say about 14 ounces on that one. We'll do one more so you guys can get a good idea. And remember, the lower you pull, the better the leverage. So if you can work it low, work it low. All right, and then that one is gonna be about five pounds and 12 ounces right there. So overall, not bad. 
So let's talk about um, anything that's come up with this, the performance of it, what I like, maybe what I don't like, if there could be some improvements, get you guys that information so you can make a more informed decision on if the XDM OSP Elite is something you wanna look at. Ooh, that is just a big hammer for the range out there. 22 round Pez dispensers, got that integrated magwell from the factory. There's a lot of good stuff going on here. And I really enjoy this thing out on the range. So the size of this thing performance wise out there is definitely a plus. It's got plenty of grip if you've got a big double XL or above size hand uh, for gloves or anything. Everything about this thing is just big. You're gonna do just fine with it. Might be a little too big for some people with smaller hands, but all of that size and weight definitely helps you control it out there. It's extremely accurate and it has run like a top without any issues. And for all of those reasons, I really do like it. Now let's talk about a couple of quick things here. And this is nitpicking that I would change if it were me and if I had the ability to make those changes. One of those is gonna be, I would prefer the magwell as metal because when we're using metal mags and a polymer magwell, as you saw up close, we're gonna get a lot of damage to the inside of that magwell. That's not uncommon, that's very well known and that's why some companies use polymer mags and some companies decide to stick with the steel mags it's an easy part to replace, but that's just something to keep aware of and something that I personally, if I could change it, I would make that out of aluminum. And like I said, that is just really nitpicking. Now, something that the audience brings up that I don't mind is that integrated back strap safety. A lot of people don't like that or think it's like a holdover from the 1911 days. It's, it's really a non-issue. I don't feel it. I don't notice it. It's never caused an issue with me running this thing. It's just one of those things. It's kind of there, so I could just care less either way but a lot of viewers do bring that up. The only other thing that I would say could make a good difference on this is going to be the trigger and what it's actually made out of. Now the meta trigger in here, it's definitely better than some other stuff out there, but I do feel that because that trigger shoe is so thin and so long, I feel that it flexes a little bit. And I think if they went to an aluminum shoe with the same setup that they have going on in here, I think it would give a little bit better of an overall trigger feel because it's gonna be much more of a solid engagement. Now, I know that may be nitpicking, but that is something that I definitely notice when I'm pulling through that wall and the trigger. I can almost feel that trigger just flex just the slightest bit, especially when it's super hot. And as we all know, polymer is meant to flex. That's why if you've ever seen the high-speed videos of Glocks or any other striker-fired setup, you can see the frame just whipping like that under that recoil impulse. So a little bit of metal might go a long way for that meta trigger system. Now, as far as the optics go, I'm gonna be doing another full video on that. My original video on the hex optics are below, but there have been some things that have been presenting themselves as far as the uh, refresh rate with the LED, especially in low light conditions. They've remained zeroed and all that stuff, but a couple little things that maybe need to be improved upon before hex moves forward with these optics. So let's talk about that price. 650 bones, cash money American right now, if you can even find that thing in a store. Because in the world of 2020, 2021, and probably through the end of this year at least, things are gonna be nasty. It's not gonna be a good time trying to get things because of everything that is going on. As far as that price goes, I feel that it's fair. It came with the optics plates. Somebody told me that it's not coming with the optics plates anymore, but mine did. It's got two 22 round magazines, although if you buy additional mags, they're like 45 or 50 bucks. That's a definite kick in the pants. But the upfront cost of it being 650 is right in line with its counterparts, uh, pretty much with like the M&P, the Core Series, the new and the 2.0, and like the Gen 5 17 MOS. So it's right there in the price point, depending on if it comes to the optics plates anymore. If you know that, let me know in the comments. And knowing all that stuff, the decision is always going to be yours. Don't just believe a guy on the internet. Take the information, look at some other people's channels, some other people's information, and make a determination on if something like the XDM Elite OSP is for you. It's definitely fun, it definitely runs hard and fast out there, and it's extremely accurate. I kind of relate that almost like to the SIG P320X series, the bigger X, uh, the X-Full, or even the X-Carry. 
I find those to be very forgiving platforms. Not that it's a good thing that you can maybe mess up on your proficiency skills a little bit, but I find both on the X Carry, the X Full, and the XDM Elite OSP, probably because of their size, that I can, I guess, mess up a little bit and still just be right where I need to be on target, or at least in that solid A zone or even in the C zone, depending on distance, where I wanna be, even if I'm making just a little bit of a mistake in my skills out there. Well, that's what I have for you all today. I hope you guys liked seeing the follow-up or learning a little bit about the XDM Elite today. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel, turn the bell notification icons on, and if you were into any of that stuff, or if you like that mood lighting, give that video a like. You guys got there to have some fun on the range, conserve the ammo. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. I will see you guys on the next one. Butterfingers, butterfingers. Wasn't sure where you were walking. <laughs>